This is Charter Local Edition. I'm Brad Pomerantz. We're on the Central Coast today in, in San Luis Obispo County, and we are joined by Steve Martin. He is the mayor of the city of Paso Robles. He is also a candidate for the Board of Supervisors in San Luis Obispo. That election will be held in June 2016. This seat takes up significant portions of North County, which has been severely impacted by the drought, and Paso Robles specifically has been impacted by by a groundwater basin and overdraft. Talk to us specifically about how your community is doing during this drought. Actually, the city of Paso Robles is doing very well, and, and we strive to clear up some com uh, confusion uh, when we talk about the stressed basin. It's yes. always called the Paso Robles I Basin. Know, right? <laughs> it's not under Paso Robles, I know, it's it to is the funny. east of Paso right. Robles. But the city of Paso Robles, over the last few years, has worked very hard to line up multiple sources of water for the city of Paso Robles. We have three sources right now. We have, of course, some of the groundwater that right. we take. We have water we take out of the river, and we have a, an increased allocation of water now from Lake Nascimento. That and helps. We have uh, recently built uh, a $48 million wastewater treatment plant, a $10 million water treatment plant, and we'll be expanding those facilities with the capability of producing recycled water in a few years which will give us a fourth source of water for the city mm. of Paso Robles. We're in, the, in an enviable position right now that we are looking at a population of growing from 30,000 to about 42,000 by the year 2045, and we have identified adequate water resources to serve that population. At, at the same time, Paso Robles is blessed with a tourist attraction, that is your wine, your grapes. Yes. Um, the plus is, like you said, the town is booming, the economy is humming, but the challenge is grapes are thirsty and there has been a, uh, a bit of contention over that. Because, more than a bit. Right, yeah, yeah I'm being bit. gentle. Yeah. Um, and so talk to me about he, how you as mayor and as a potential supervisor will look to manage um, the, the factions. Right. Well, first of all, uh, the great majority, if not yeah, right. all. Well uh, stated. Uh, grape uh, or great? Yeah, the grape majority <laughs> uh, is located outside the city of Paso. Oh, is that true? So we don't have a lot of wine grapes in the city limits. Okay, fair enough. We enjoy the industry that's generated by wine and the and the tourism related industry because of that. But if you are elected supervisor, that will be a different right. that will be a different instance. Mm -hmm. But uh, right now, the city of Paso Robles has worked very hard to work with its neighbors mm -hmm. to manage the water resources adequately and fairly for the future. Um, we have just gone through the uh, water district election. At this time, we don't right. know what that's going to say. Sure. But the city of Paso Robles has advocated a, a district for that area. In in the past so that we have a legal entity representing all of those peoples and all those property owners mm -hmm. in that area to comply with the state mandated groundwater management uh, requirements. Right. So we, we are very active partners with all the people around us to manage the water supplies fairly and adequately for the future. But what's remarkable to me is I think a lot of folks in the region the contention, the acrimony was a bit muted because we always felt an El Nino is coming don't worry, it's going to work out. Yeah. But guess what? The well, El Nino hasn't really come. Well, and El Nino hasn't arrived, and, and that's bad. Right. But I think what people need to remember is that we live in a state that historically has gone through drought cycles. So just as we would like to have an El Nino, we have to expect that this is not the last drought cycle that we will right, go through. So this is grim, sir. I our, mean, but our opportunity now, and the, and the opportunity mm -hmm. the city of Paso Robles has capitalized on by managing to put this array mm -hmm. of water resources together, our opportunity now as a, as a first district, as a county, as a state, is to be mindful of water conservation management and delivery systems to the point where we can lessen the impact of future droughts. So let's yeah. talk about conservation, if we may, yes. because there's no doubt that the governor has been very clear he's looking for Californians to conserve. We've done a pretty good job as a state. Our conservation numbers have been dropping a bit, month by month. Uh, that being said, how is it going in Paso Robles? You had a pretty high target, I think 28% conservation. 28% right. conservation mandate. We have just finished the first six months of mm -hmm. that mandate and we, we actually achieved 29.5% conservation. That's stunning. Over 2013 levels. Over the last six months, right. the people within the city of Paso Robles have saved, have conserved over a half billion gallons of water. How? And we did that without a punitive ordinance. There, How? Was, there was a suggestion that we penalize people that right. are using too much water. And we decided, no, no, the people of Pass Rebels know about this issue. They're smart, they're mm -hmm. responsible, they will take care of it, and they have. So we have been urging people through our, our water conservation programs within the city and also uh, other programs 
uh, turf replacement, mm. et cetera, and just simply going to the people and saying, we're required to reduce our water usage or we're going to be fined, please do that. Even and your responded. friends in ag? Pardon? Even your friends in ag? They've been able to conserve? Again, most of the agriculture right, is outside of the city. I understand. Yeah. I want to talk about another issue, and that focuses upon uh, those that are struggling a bit. Yes. Um, surprisingly enough, even in Paso Robles, there is a homeless crisis. There's a homeless crisis up and down the state. As you surely know, in Los Angeles County, the homeless crisis is quite acute. The LA County has become the epicenter, literally the epicenter for homelessness in this nation. How are you addressing the homeless crisis, both as mayor, and should you be elected supervisor? Yes, it's a great question. Something, again, I've been involved in since I got back on the Paso City Council three years ago. Mm -hmm. I'm the city's representative to the Homeless Services mm -hmm. Oversight mm -hmm. Committee mm -hmm. and learning a lot about that issue over the last few years. City of Paso Robles, uh, along with other, others, taking steps such as declaring uh, crisis shelter ordinances. Right. We have a special study session. Uh, we will mm. be talking about the homeless issue and how we can expand our participation and making sure that homeless needs are met. We staged the first what's called a MASH event last year, Mobile Assistive Services for the Homeless, mm -hmm. bringing 22 governmental agencies to Pass Robles to address the needs of the homeless instead of telling those folks, we have the help for you, but you have to drive 30 miles to get it. The so, question is, and I don't want this to come off the wrong way, do they want help? That's a, another great question because mm -hmm. what I've learned about the, our homeless population, and a lot of us sort of have this idea that mm -hmm. the homeless population is this monolithic body of people, they're all the same. Right. Not true. In very broad strokes, they, they break out in three different categories. We have the people who were severely impacted by the recession of right. 2008. They were hanging on marginally economically. They got knocked off the economic wagon. They're trying to get back on. Mm -hmm. We have a se second large group of folks who are homeless who have serious physical and mental problems. Right. So. Housing, although critical and what should be provided first before anything else, is not their only concern. They need additional assistance. Then we have a third swath of people who have, quite frankly, chosen homelessness as a lifestyle. Right. Right. So what I want to do as a mayor and as a first district supervisor is let's address these first two yeah, At least the first, first. two let's are talk, service resistance. Let's help the people who mm -hmm. want to get back uh, into the productive mainstream of society and have the ability to do that with a little bit of help. Let's get them going. Are you getting them going quickly in that for so many years we required sobriety uh, before we let someone into a shelter. Are right. you taking a housing first approach? I, I have. I have mm -hmm. taken the housing first approach. The state of Utah has been very successful at using housing mm -hmm. first. They've discovered that even for the folks that feel that we shouldn't spend uh, much money mm -hmm. on homeless services, that it's 50% of the cost of supplying services to the homeless if we provide housing first and get them into a right. shelter. And so I think that housing first is uh, is the way to go. And when you look at a larger uh, district, such as the first district, as opposed to the city of Paso Robles, how do you plan to take your insight, your goals and desires on the homeless crisis to the ne that next level? Well, I will be. Pre I am presenting uh, to the mayors in our mm -hmm. in our mm -hmm. county regionally uh, mm -hmm. uh, regional solutions asking them to buy into it. Mm -hmm. I'm contacting our state representatives with ideas from what we can do in the first district to provide for what I call a beyond homelessness campus. Mm -hmm. So for those first two broad swaths of people, we can get them back on the economic bandwagon. We can address medical uh, and physical needs to help them and, and, and get those get those folks going again with a housing first approach. I think that we need regional solutions. I think we have tons of very good hearted people who are working hard to supply the needs of the homeless, but we need to coordinate those services and opportunities so that we get the biggest bang for our buck and have the most efficient, cost effective service for homeless to help the greatest number of people we can. Do you feel as if the folks in this region are willing to put yes. their money where their the, mouth is? They're waking up to this. When right. I meet with the people through HSOC, I meet the- HSOC through, is? The Housing. Homeless Services Oversight Committee. Mm -hmm. uh, I meet with people of Paso Cares, mm -hmm. an organization, nonprofit in Paso Robles. These folks are beginning to to look at each other and say, you know, we can do this together. We can do this together. If we're going to go after right. these funds, we can we can make this happen on a regional mm -hmm. level. So, and I think that our citizenry uh, citizenry is waking up also because we're putting out the message that we need volunteers. If we're going to open warming shelters, we have to have people working in them. So we need your help too. He is Steve Martin. He is a candidate for the Board of Supervisors in San Luis Obispo County, Mayor of Paso Robles. I'm Brad Pomerantz, Charter Local Edition.